Hello, this is Warlord. Today we're going to take a look at crashing an airplane. It's not going to be anything fancy, but it is something that I am asked quite a bit uh, in email. Is how do I use physics to crash an airplane? Okay, that's what we're going to do, and we're going to let the iClone physics do the work. So let's get started. Now for this project, we're going to use the desert terrain. So let's go into set, terrain, mesh medium, and let's load the desert. This is one of my favorite terrains because it can be manipulated for a lot of different things. Uh, it's an open architecture type terrain. And what we're going to do is get rid of everything but the desert floor. I'm just selecting it and deleting it. Then I'm going to select the desert floor and I'm going to convert it to a prop. Now this is what I like about this. You can change the texture on it. You can do pretty much anything you want with it. But the thing that I really do like about it is that we can manipulate how rough or smooth we want the height on it to be. And I'm just going to bring it down just a little. You can tell by the grid how rough it is. Now let's go ahead and let's set up our physics for it. Alright, now, before we go any further, I'm going to load the plane that I'm using, which is a private plane prop I got from Turbo Squid. Any plane that you have, any type of a plane object will work. I just happen to be using this one. And I'm going to use the two to show you something right quick about physics if you're not aware of it. Let's go ahead and activate the physics on the plane. So we had the physics activated on the plane and we had the physics activated uh, on the desert. So when we, I'm going to go to by frame. Now, both just fall because I didn't tell it to be static. So I want the floor to be static. But you get, that's kind of an unusual reaction, isn't it? The plane bounces off of it. Well, the reason is because it's not contoured. It's got a big old square box around it, as you can tell by this red. So what we're going to do is we're going to change that to self-mesh. And you'll notice the change as the plane settles down a little more and it doesn't bounce because it's not interacting with it like it was before. But now the plane also has a box. So let's change it to self-mesh. And now you get a totally different interaction between the two. So always be sure and use self-mesh when you can. Okay, let's go ahead and get our plane set up. And a lot of times it's a lot easier just to go with the axis. And what we're going to do is let uh, gravity do the work. So let me show you what I'm talking about. We're going to go ahead and take it to zero on Z so it won't just drop straight down. And let's go to minus five on Y. By frame. And then you'll notice the plane's skidding sideways towards us. So what I mean when I say to, to get on axis, basically, is let's turn the plane in the proper direction. And it wouldn't hurt for it to be skidding a little sideways because a plane crash would certainly be doing that. So now we have our axis set and we can kind of set our field of view, our shot, based on that. And we can also reposition our airplane now that we know where our axis is going to be so it'll be more over the desert. And what we have right now is just gravity taking it forward. Which means that if you didn't know this, in order to move an object forward, you don't really have to use keyframes. You can let gravity do it. It just depends on how many objects you've got going in the scene and what you're going to be doing with the gravity. But you can animate any object just moving with gravity. Now we want it to go down a little. So let's go with minus 2 on the z-axis. There we go. That's more of a controlled descent. Let's play around a little. Let's go with minus one and just see what happens. Always encourage you to play around, experiment. Goes a little further before it bounces is basically it. So you can already guess where this is going to go. It's going to be a little shorter. It's going to go down a little faster. So actually minus two wasn't bad. We did get quite a bounce there and that's things we'll work with here in a minute. This will be personal preference, but let's go ahead and go with minus two. 
And that'll be our initial gravity setup. Now let's go ahead and deal with the balance. With the airplane selected, let's go at 50 for dampening, and that is quite a bit of dampening. In fact, it's also going to slow its descent down because it dampens everything. But we should get a much more controllable crash this way, something that might at least look survivable. A lot more controllable crash. Now, if this is the crash we want, this is where it's most important that you do not rerun the simulation. If that had a spin or something in it that you wanted to keep but you might not be able to replicate, or you want to cut in as different footage to make it look like it was part of that crash, then do not run that simulation again until you remove the physics from the object in question, or if you're not sure, turn off physics altogether. That way you will not lose the animation that is baked into this plane from the physics. And then you can come in and deal with what you want to do with it in a manual keyframe sense. Now here's something else to keep in mind, and I get a lot of questions about this. Your final shot your final edited version, not out of iClone, but out of your editor, does not need to and should never rely on one simulation run. If you like the descent based on one gravity, and you like the impact or the crash and skids based on another setting in gravity, then go into the editing room and cut those two together. Don't worry about running the perfect simulation, because you may not, you may get a great spin on one, but it bounces and turns over or does things that no one could survive or doesn't look real. So go into your editing room, take your best shots, edit them together to make your best crash. Now let's go down and work on the end of our crash. I've got the plane selected, <clears throat> excuse me, moving down towards the end. Hit the home key so I can zoom in on it. And what we're going to do now is pick an area that we can convert to path because I like the way the uh, curves work. So I'm going to start about right there. Let's open up the timeline and let's add one keyframe right there to the plane. Now you can also open up your animation so you can see how far down to go. And let's move this down to the end of the animation somewhere in there. And let's do another keyframe. You can either double click in the timeline or you can go over here and use the add keyframe button when you're on the timeline. Now let's select those two, right click, and convert position to path. Now we have our pathway. So we'll grab our airplane, we have to position it on that path. There's our first uh, positioning, first marker. Move down to the end to your keyframe you created. Pick the last marker. Now you'll notice it does go through since we went to path. It Now it goes through the terrain. Well, that's not a problem. At this point, we can select our terrain, actually add it to the terrain and make it terrain. Then we can select our path and project that to the terrain. And now it'll follow the terrain again. Now, to deal with this abrupt halt, let's select our plane, open up the timeline, go to constraint. On the second constraint, right click, transition curve, ease out. Instead of it coming to such an abrupt halt, it should just kind of slide to a stop. And that's a lot smoother than what we had originally. Now, there is one problem inherent in doing it this way. And that is where the animation switches over to this first constraint down here. You're going to see the plane jump a little bit. Now what I do to deal with that is I deal with that in the editor with a different camera angle. Or you can use the camera switch with a different camera angle. And switch away to where you do not see the jump. Or edit out the jump. There's really no use in going back and trying to tweak this because this is just a very difficult transition. But this is one simple way to do a crash. So that's the trade-off to this.
Now, this tutorial is already getting long enough, so I'm not going to get into the specifics of FX of particles, but there is a quick way to add several. Don't just add one particle. Let me show you what I mean there. Like, <clears throat> when we come to particles, we can add one that covers a certain area. But it's much easier just to go ahead and add a primitive. Let's create a dummy like we always do with our uh, box. Set as dummy, which of course control D on and off. But as a dummy, even if it's visible in the screen, it won't render. And now we want to go back to our particle and let's go to sandstorm. Now what I want to do with sandstorm is I'm going to come over here and go zero, zero, zero on position. And I also don't want the area it covers to quite possibly be that big, but we'll just leave it like that for now and see how that works. And what I'm going to have to do is attach this individually because you cannot mass attach particles. So this particle is now attached to the box. I'm going to go ahead and load four more particles and I'm going to set them the same way and attach them to the box. I'm not going to make you watch that. We'll come back after I'm finished. Okay. I now have five of these sandstorms attached to this box. I'm now going to select the box and we're going to attach the box to the plane. And we'll go ahead and use the position. Now that doesn't put it exactly where I want it, so I'm going to move it up a little and let's see what we have. Okay. Now, normally I would have timed these and turned them on and off before I attached them. But I want to show you what can happen and I want to show you how to go through this. So what we need to do now is we need to turn each of these off. Like I said, we could have set just one of these and then gone back and, and duplicated it and things. But let's just go ahead and turn each one of these off. And let's wait till we get to the point of impact. Just a little before. Let's say right about there. And let's turn them on. Now let's go back and see what we have. It should come on just right before it hits, but it should start bouncing a little first. There we go. Now, as you see, we have a large area that that covers because there's five of them in there. You could mix that with smoke, with fire. You could put any kind you wanted in there. I'm just showing you a basic way to get that going. That's something you'll need to experiment with, and we could spend lessons on how to do particles. So anyway, I hope what I've shown you has helped.